Television offers an excellent starting point for video games, but where do developers take it from there? I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today we're going to look at video games based on TV shows that weren't cartoons. Second Opinion Games First up, we have Dukes of Hazard on the Atari 2600. Now, what does everyone remember about Dukes of Hazard? Well, probably Daisy Duke herself, but more like the great jumps that the General Lee used to do and that sound of the car horn itself. Well, that is here, my friends, and that is the only thing that is here. Sometimes you have to press the left button to move faster. Sometimes you have to push the right button to move a little bit slower. You have to make an ever-increasing size jump, and other times you can play two player where then you have a cop car as well which definitely has a different sounding engine and also tries to make the same jump again and again and again just like in the tv show overall there's not much here because they probably didn't have that much to go with Moving on to the Super Nintendo with Home Improvement, one of the craziest decisions ever in video games, how they took a family drama about a cocaine sniffing dude with a wife that's always right and a job on a TV set and turned it into a run and gun shooter where you mow down dinosaurs and try to clear the stages in an action platformer environment. Oh my god. On top of it, it is ridiculously difficult how much health you have isn't clear at any point in time and also where to go also not very clear I can never get very far in this game especially just out of the dinosaur land not that I would want to I like the idea of having Tim the Toolman Taylor mow down dinosaurs with a nail gun, but my god, this was just an awful idea from the start. However, I do know some people that really love this game. That brings us to the 80s juggernaut Knight Rider. Now, one of the things about Knight Rider is that he never had a gun. He just relied on excellent driving, skill, detective work, and other things to accomplish the mission. In this video game, you have a machine gun trying to mow down other cars on the road there's no investigating anything mostly it's just there's an enemy that stole something go blow them up and you do now the driving here is actually done quite well however the boost which makes you jump usually sends you flying completely off the screen and no clear way in which to land properly without possibly blowing up and dying you also have some really tight time limits here so trying to accomplish your goals is very difficult if you could clear even the first couple stages of this well then you're probably an nes master or a kid with way too much time on his hands Going from the dumbed down simple to I do not know what the heck is going on, check out Airwolf also on the NES. Now, one of the things I love the most about the actual TV show Airwolf was the music. It was freaking awesome. And I'm proud to say that it is here in all of its 8-bit glory on the NES. And you know what? I still never get sick of it. And I better not because it is the only song you're going to hear for like the entire stinking game. It does actually pump you up to accomplish your missions of usually rescuing hostages, aka girls that look sort of like prostitutes dressed in red as you take off with them and try and fly off the screen. You could also land at airports or refuel and the graphics here are done quite well however the controls feel just i don't know crazy you have a shoot button you have a missile button and then you have to use select and start to speed up or slow down the controls just feel completely spaceman like and i can never get the hang of them even though i do manage to start clearing some levels and have a good time but mostly it's because of that great music but Sega wasn't going to let Nintendo have all of the TV fun. Check out ALF on the Sega Master System. It's kind of like a point-and-click adventure game mixed with a side-scroller, subtracting that point-and-click adventure aspect. If that sounds weird, it's because the game is kind of crap, but I also really enjoy it at the same time. If you have a walkthrough, then you might actually know what the heck to do here. You see, first off, you have to collect a cat, and then you have to open up the fridge and pull out a 
hoagie or salami or something. Then you have to go in the basement, let the cat chase the rat off the screen, run into the cave, and then hit bats with a salami. Now here is where you notice the hit detection is absolutely awful, just like the overall controls of Alth himself. After all, he's like a midget in a Muppet costume. I'm sure that he's not very agile. So eventually you get to find some gold nuggets and then you wish you bought a lantern with the gold or something you jump to your death you fall in pits and you die repeatedly yeah that's alf there's some creepers that are just out to get you and these creepers are just the creepiest people you could possibly imagine again get the walkthrough if you want to play the game but you're in for some great punishment but how about a little TurboGrafx-16 in your life? I'm playing JJ and Jeff, and I am playing the Japanese version because it doesn't have all the censorship that the American version had. Now this was based off of some type of Japanese TV show with these two guys that do crazy weird stuff, and that's exactly what you get out of this action platformer kind of game. It's kind of like Adventure Island because your health is always going down, and everything wants to kill you, and you can get your health back by getting some fruit. You could also kick some areas in order to get fruit or maybe some gold coins, which you could then play a little casino game in the toilet. I, I guess. Japan's awfully weird. Also, there's a lot of pooping going on and maybe some peeing too. The controls feel slippery as all heck, but that's just something you kind of have to get used to. After all, this is definitely not Mario Brothers. Your characters are big and huge. The graphics are bright and pop and stand out. The music isn't too bad here, and even though I personally absolutely hated this game at first, it certainly grew on me because because I am loving every minute of this poop fest. Japan also had Knight Rider Special. Now this was definitely just the NES version, only Turbo Graphics 16 ified and they did a pretty good job with it. They even got the opening music at the very beginning. There's also some voice sampling here, but I'm pretty sure it's in Japanese. Either that or it's muffled to the point where I don't even know what the heck's going on. Hey, you still have a machine gun mowing down people on the road, but at least this time it's far more playable. Also, the time limits here, and yeah, it can be a little strict, but the overall speed that your car can go is so freaking insane, you're probably gonna get that time extension before long. Also, the graphics look beautiful. You can still do the super jump, only this time because the camera's behind your car, you can see where you're going to land, which makes it actually useful. I really like playing this even though, again, the difficulty is through the freaking roof, especially when you get to the boss battles, which just drain your life in near record time. Man, I wish I had bigger machine guns. But I feel like we jumped past the Atari 2600 a little too quick. How about MASH? Now I know there was a MASH movie, but you know what? That wasn't nearly as successful as the TV show, which I guarantee that this was based off not that movie, because the TV show actually made some money. Now you can start off by having people drop directly into your helicopter blades as you try to get them. Also competing with either a friend or the computer as also a tank tries to shoot you down because after all you're in the Korean War here. If you bring the people back to your base, well then you could perform some surgery on them. And this is kind of like operation. You have to go in and get the bullet and only the bullet has a hitbox here so then you have to move it out of the body. If you don't, it will say ferret face at the top of the screen. Why it says that, who the heck knows. And then you go back to picking up more people until time runs out and we see who has the top score. Also, you could play a slightly different game where then you have to go pick up the people instead of dropping them into your helicopter blades and then bring them back to your base. Also, this is a competition against a computer or a good friend and then you have to do that operation scene all over again. This is pretty fun, but you know what? Coleco did it one better. 
In this version, you have to fly your helicopters high or low over trees or maybe sometimes run into them and then land on wooden soldiers on the battlefield while a tank is trying to shoot you down. Then after you fly too far to the right, you have to fly all the way back to the left with also moving over the trees instead of running into them and then drop off your patience. Now you go into the operation screen and you can actually tell it's human for one and you actually i'm surprised there isn't blood and guts here because this is kind of crazy we're back to the operation unit and we're removing those things it doesn't say ferret face this time around when you hit the wall sadly or even something crazier and then it's just going back to the other screen competing with a friend here is absolutely glorious and you have multiple levels of difficulty this is obviously the easiest one so i can actually get a recording for you guys but it gets pretty intense just like Battlestar Galactica on the original Xbox, as you mow down the robot-like Cylons, not the ones from the TV show slightly after where they're kind of sexy looking, instead you are just, basically this is Star Wars, guys. Sometimes you have to protect your Battlestar, sometimes you have to do random missions, blowing up satellites, turning off shields, taking out towers that want to mow you down, and it's just Star Wars in the Battlestar star universe there's no exploration and diplomacy going on here not a lot of interpersonal relationships between your fellow teammates even though there is an awful lot of chatter it's mostly about flying around and blowing up everything and i kind of like it but it doesn't feel that much like Battlestar Galactica. On top of it, it's kind of a hard game. If you die, you go all the way back to the beginning of a level, not the individual missions in the level, but the very freaking beginning. So you're gonna be replaying these levels a lot. Of course, over on the PS2, we have Alias. This was definitely inspired by Metal Gear Solid because she has to sneak around in different environments. She might be able to get too cold for her own good, dressed like a cocktail waitress, but you know what? She can still kick some serious butt here. This might stay a little bit too true to the form of the TV show. It walks you through all of the missions and you have to use different gadgets to do things like hacking into computers and stuff like that and the fighting just feels really kind of awkward not nearly as awkward as the shooting though and also the character models here are weird i know jennifer gardner's supposed to be really hot but she's kind of like the best looking girl i've never been attracted to and her in-game video game model also is is just awful looking even if you can make her do some really weird stuff i don't recommend anyone plays this game ever you know just watch the tv show it's like the same thing only a million times better now, if we're trying to talk about a game exactly like the TV show, then we have to turn to Jackass also on the PS2. Because when you're watching the show, you feel like you're completely wasting time looking at idiots. The video game is the exact same thing. It's a bunch of little mini games that feel like a complete waste of time acting like idiots. There's even like a Dance Dance Revolution version where you play as like Steve-O in a jockstrap and my god this is hard to watch and even harder to play because i have no rhythm whatsoever there's shopping carts you could throw bodies off hills and lots of crazy stuff like that even though it's kind of amusing and many of these games have been rebuilt today in roblox of all things this is just really dumb just like the tv show making it one of the most accurate video games to tv ever created as stupid as that sounds but you know what i think there is one one more thing more accurate and that was the Sega CD. Now they had two games that really stood out to me. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the Kamen Rider. I'm showing you Kamen Rider because I think it's a little bit more interesting. In Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, there was just on-screen arrows that just you hit it and it basically lets you watch more of the TV show. There was nothing more than that, making it the most accurate video game to TV ever made by default because it was just watching 
watching a TV show. In Common Rider here, it's a little bit more interesting, even though I think this could have been a movie and not a TV show. Everything is dubbed to English, thankfully, so we can actually understand it. It still has commands on the screen, but this time you might actually get some different video playing based on your actions themselves. If you miss hit a timing button press, well, maybe you'll actually take damage yourself. When you defeat an enemy, then you could watch the whole rest of the sequence without having to press any more buttons, and you even have some different choose-your-own-adventure-style moments here. The load times, believe it or not, are not too bad. The graphics are what you would expect from the Sega CD, with everything being dark and also just watchable enough to keep on playing. The storyline is fun, and you can actually replay this more than once, unlike the Bunny Warf and Power Rangers video, which was just an episode of the TV played on your Sega CD. So I gotta say, this is probably the most faithful conversion of TV to video game ever made, as sad as that sounds. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it. Man, I had my hopes set a little too high on that Alias video game. Maybe I just couldn't get the hang of it with the brief time I had with it, but I had a lot of games to play. So if you have a ridiculous idea that spans many different consoles like I'm doing right now, this is something I absolutely love to do, and I want to do more videos like this. So please let me know how you feel about it in the comments down below and until later i will see you again guys